Hello everybody and welcome. In this video we are going to draw the Penrose staircase made famous by MC Escher. As a child I was hooked to MC Escher and one of my favorite works of his is the famous piece Ascending and Descending based on the Penrose staircase. As you can see it looks like a regular staircase but if you look more closely you notice that the steps go only up and up and up in, in an impossible loop. In this video we will be recreating this impossible staircase in Blender. We will be starting with a simple block like this. It's basically just a cube with the two of the faces removed. You can download the block from, a link, from the link in the description or you can make a block yourself. If you are interested in how I made the brick texture then have a look at this video. To make the staircase we select the cube and press shift D to duplicate. We press X and minus 2 and enter to shift it in the X direction. Then we press G, Z and 0.5 to shift it upwards. We repeat the steps until we have four blocks in a row. With the last block still selected, we press R, Z, 90 and then enter. This rotates the block 90 degrees about the Z axis. Now let's dupli duplicate this block and move the blocks again. This time we move it by pressing Y2 and enter to move the block in the Y direction. And we move it upwards as well. And we repeat this four times. Next we add two blocks backwards in the X direction again. And finally we add two blocks in the Y direction. As we take a look at our creation we see that we've created a weirdly shaped staircase that just ends in the middle of nowhere. It seems that the impossible staircase is not so impossible after all. However it's uh, completely useless because it's just a staircase leading to nowhere. In order to make the staircase loop we need to create a re illusion. So to create this illusion we first go to isometric mode. Uh, it's much easier to do the next step in isometric mode. If you don't know what the difference is between perspective mode and isometric mode, let's just say that in isometric mode the object doesn't get, nothing gets smaller as it moves further away from the viewer by perspective mode we take into account that things appear to be smaller as they are further away. Uh, look at the top left corner to check if the view is in isometric mode or perspective mode. If it's in perspective it would say user persp while if it's in orthographic it would say user ortho. We press five on the keypad to change between the two. Next we press zero to go to the camera view. We see that the camera is still stuck in perspective mode. We want to put the camera in orthographic mode as well. Select the camera in the project hierarchy and click on the camera icon. Under lens we choose orthographic. Next we click on the plus on the right hand side. We find lock camera to view under the view title. Now the camera moves with us as we move. And here comes the magic. We want to move the view in such a way that the last block overlaps with the first block. Having found approximately the right view we select the last block and go to edit mode. We select the brick face on the right side and we delete it. Next we use subdivide to add a vertex on the right side 
off the top face. We move the corner vertex using G and X. Pressing X ensures that we move the vertex in the right direction. Then we move the middle vertex, first along the Y axis and then along the X axis. It looks alright, but the texture on the top of the last block has moved a bit. In order to correct this, we first we unlock the camera view, the camera from the view and press 7 on the keypad to get the top view. Let's open another view and open up the texture map. In order to fix the texture, we need the shape in the map and the shape in the model to be roughly the same. So let's select the middle vertex only, press G and Y and then move it downwards. Next I'm going to select this middle vertex as well as this corner vertex and then press G and X to move it to the left. As I move the vertex you can see how the texture in the model changes. It doesn't have to be perfect. Nobody is coming to inspect the model with a microscope. It just needs to be good enough that no one who is not looking at this very very closely will notice it. So, okay, I'm going to close this view and I'm going to give it a render. Doesn't look bad. You can fill up these holes with more brick textures if you like and add some lighting. Be careful when adding lighting though, the shadow falling on the wrong place is a dead giveaway. I hope you liked this video and or found it useful. If you did, then you might find this video uh, useful as well. And uh, since you're here anyway, why not give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. So have a good day. See you in the next tutorial. Bye bye.